good evening good evening good evening so i wanted to come on here and talk a little bit about the sba eidl programs um and some of you may or may not have heard but sba has actually increased their limits to businesses original loans and so um i actually spoke to an sba agent earlier today um let me lower this a little bit i actually had an agent an sba agent call me today um to do compliance on the sba eidl loan that i took out per, uh, personally and um you know me being the person i am we got to chat him and i just asked him you know a couple of series of different questions um, he wasn't in the customer care department, so he didn't necessarily have all the answers to my questions. Um, but I just wanted to come on here and talk about it um, because I had a conversation with the SBA agent earlier today. And so um, he was basically doing a follow-up call and the SBA right now is doing a lot of follow-up calls to all these small business owners that originally initially applied for EIDL, either advanced or loan assistance. And so what they're basically doing is calling all these businesses and making sure that they're maintaining compliance. And so part of the requirements for our loans were to have hazard insurance um, and to ensure basically the business up to a certain uh, dollar amount and have that insurance in place. So the SBA agent did ask me for my policy information and my insurance just to remain compliance with him. I let him know that I um, spoke to my insurance agent back um, in 2020 when we originally got the initial loan. Um, I let him know that my my policy here for the business um, liability commercial actually had hazard insurance included in my already initial policy that the landlord of my commercial real estate building um, required from us so thankfully I didn't have to get any additional insurance for those of you that do have retail storefronts definitely reach out to your insurance and you guys have insurance which you always should because God forbid something happens you need to be covered um, but yeah, you guys want to make sure if you took out money from the SBA, you took out an EIDL, you want to make sure that you are remaining compliant with them, right? You got to remember the SBA is a federally backed program. So this is a this is the feds. I want you to treat it as such. And so part of that is going to be making sure that you're doing the things that you need to do to remain compliant with your loan agreements right um, a lot of you when you guys sign these loans you signed off agreements that you um, that you chose to do X Y and Z so um, uh, they have increased they have allowed increases for the loan up to two million dollars so um, I actually logged in there today because when I spoke to the agent earlier he let me know that he wanted me to um, send him over my insurance information and then he also let us let me know that all of the business owners that receive the EIDL assistance loan program they need to submit a and I just filled mine out they need to submit the resolution and certification of that loan and so basically it's just an additional piece of paper that the SBA needs you guys to submit to be in order to maintain compliance. And so they in that resolution paperwork, you are basically just taking all faults in case you defer on the loan. So you're definitely going to want to make sure to contact the SBA if you haven't heard from an agent because they are calling all business owners and they want you guys um, they want you guys to have paperwork signed on uh, this resolution paperwork signed on by you and or any of your partners. Um, and so that's definitely a necessity to be able to maintain compliance. So right now when I posted the live, I had uh, made the title of the live um, SBA EIDL increase because they are allowing increases for the business up to $2 million. And so if you got the initial loan to begin with, um, chances are you probably are going to qualify for an increase of your said initial loan. Now, I want you guys to really keep in mind that when you pull from this EIDL loan, you have 
certain operating expenses you could spend the said loan on, right? The initial guidance that was provided by EIDL let us know that we can that we had to spend our funds on um, X, Y, and Z. And so when you guys are considering increasing your loan, I want you to go to your original paperwork that you signed off on the loan. It's going to have very detailed um, instructions for what you can spend the loan funds on and what you cannot spend the loan funds on. Now, for those of you that don't remember, when we initially applied for this loan, and one of the things I was asking the SBA agent today directly, because I wanna hear it from the horse's mouth, right? I don't wanna hear it from other accountants because um, we talk about this all day long <laughs> and we have banter about why they may be doing this and why they may be doing that, but those are all personal opinions. I wanna hear from the SBA agent himself the information. So one of the questions that I asked him was initially when you needed to apply for the loan to qualify for the loan you needed to show a minimum of a 25 percent decrease in gross sales and revenue from your business from the previous year to the current year so that at that time when we applied it was 2020 so we had to show a loss in 2020 the first year pandemic started in our gross revenue from 2019 at least in one quarter that was the initial guidance okay so now, fast forward, a lot of us got some of these funds and a lot of business owners have been thriving by using these funds, whether that's the PPP, the EIDL, if they were in positions to receive them. And I'm not talking about the scammers and fraudsters. I'm talking about the real business owners, right? Those that took their funds and um, invested it into tech technology, invested it into innovations, invested it into marketing and advertising, invested it into changing the back end of their processes and systems, invested it into payroll staff, independent contractors bringing on more help. Those are those are the ones I'm talking about. And so, for a lot of business owners, that money. COVID money, pandemic money, really, really changed the game for a lot of business owners because they were able to use these funds and grow their business. So a lot of those same business owners are now when they initially received 50K, 100K, or even up to 150K, which is what it was at that time. Now, what happens, and I asked the agent this um, myself today, I said, are they taking measures to actually track the 25% increase. And I was having this conversation with some of my accounting friends over the weekend. So what happens with the business owners that actually are thriving, but still get an increase of funds, right? Um, are they uncompliant for requesting the increase of funds, even though they're using them correctly? Are, they're not even they're not at this point in time right now even accepting 2020 tax returns so they don't have your most up-to-date or are or they aren't even requesting right now your most up-to-date financials so right now there's no way they're actually seeing what your numbers are now right then to the first initial EIDL loan so I asked him that and he said you know, it's a. It, he kind of answered me in a circle, basically telling me, one, there's no real right answer, right? They don't have compliance in place as of yet, um, and I and I know that they know that some of these business owners have taken these fun, have taken these funds and been able to, you know, um, pour it back into their business and hopefully do the right thing where they're now calculating an increased return on investment, right? Um, so I hope they're doing the right thing, and I know there are a lot that are because from some of the corporate accounts that have that you know between uh, that we have dealt with, I see the increases in the revenues for from comparison to 2019 to 2020 to, to now um, going into 2021. We can see the difference in the numbers for some of these business owners that did the right thing by it. Um, so now, do we request to an additional two million? Or, or whatever, our, everyone's going to have a different number and they're going to tell you, hey, you have up to this amount to take and then you decide what you want to take, you know. And for the business owners that are thriving, my question to the agent was, do we request an additional increase when we may necessarily not have just, we may, we may have one necessary loss in one quarter because that was initial guidance. We may have that initial loss in that quarter from 2020 to 2019, but what happens if we don't have it throughout the whole year? 
What happens if overall, after let's say everything opened back up in the summertime quarters three and four, I thrived and now my overall gross revenue is um, has an increase from my annual gross revenue from the previous year, what happens then? And so he didn't really give me much guidance on it and it just shows me that they are still figuring it out the same way um, we all kind of have to figure it out, right? Tax law changed so many times um, for the guidance on the loans, on proposals, on what they need and there were a lot of people that got weren't able to even qualify, right? But on the other hand now, what happens to some of these businesses that are already $100,000 in debt, aren't thriving, and now are going to request more money? What happens to those business owners, right? If they're already $100,000 in debt and mismanaging their current finances after they request this increase, what happens then, right? What happens to the ones that are going to bankrupt because now they're $100,000 in debt and they, that $100,000 in debt may now be uh, brought up to $500,000 in debt? What happens then? So I asked the um, agent today, I said, so when, um, uh, when you know, when uh, submitting the, when you guys actually finalize the request, the answer to the request for our increases, how are you determining that? What is the determining factor? Because right now, when you log in, it's just a button. You click request more funds. So it's, there's no questionnaires. Um, I think that if you change something on your information, you then need to resubmit verification documentation. But if nothing changes, it literally is just the click of a button. So what happens to the business owner that have access to additional funds that may or may not know how to properly manage said funds and could possibly bankrupt in the next five years? A lot of questions, a lot of things in the air going on. <laughs> um, I think, what are my personal opinions? Like, uh, us as accountants, we all have opinions. I think that for the business owners that do the right thing, um, and even us in the finance industry, I think this is an amazing thing for us because you guys really need accountants now more than ever. So I think it's an amazing thing for us as an industry, but as um, more of a accountant standpoint for small business owners, what happens when they take all of these funds, don't know how to properly manage these funds, and then overspend, right? What's going to happen then? You know, they're not going to be able to create more jobs. They're, they're, they're going to end up owing, you know, a gazillion dollars <laughs> to the government. Um, and I hope you guys really read your paperwork when you initially applied for the SBA EIDL loan programs because in that in that paperwork documentation, it literally says you cannot move your business address without reporting it to them. You cannot relocate without reporting it to them. You cannot change rental locations without re reporting it to them. Um, there's a lot of things that you guys cannot do before reporting to the, the SBA government which is they're going to have full control now more control over your business than you guys maybe even notice but um i think from my personal opinion i think for the businesses to do the right thing it is going to be an amazing reward and they're going to be able to pivot right because everyone we had to pivot in the last two years we had to become digital we had to even if we didn't do any initial on on digital marketing previously you had to do it starting 2020 or else you were gonna notice a decline in, in sales you know there were a lot of um, even us here as a company at straight talks there were a lot of innovations we took off from January from March 2020 when pandemic started to now and it was a gazillion you know trials tribulations errors for like freelance like it was just it was a lot um, but we had to do that, and in order to pivot and 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 up and upgrade backends and create systems and operation that takes that takes one payroll dollars and two operating expenses, and so um, for the business owners out there that did that get these funds and were able to do the right thing, I know that there's a lot of you that are currently thriving, so that shows that these, you know economic injury disaster programs, which is what EIDL stands for, it shows that they actually did revitalize small businesses all over, right? They did do that, you know, for the for the ones that are legitimate, because we all know there was a lot going on. Um, but I know that it definitely revitalized a lot of small business owners. Now, with the increase, I think it, it, it for me, from the accounting perspective, it makes it a little bit too leery because they're making it way too easy to access more funds, I think. 
you know, what goes up must come down. And I think I was reading a blog the other day and it said that our current inflation rate is as the highest it's ever been in the last two years versus like the last 200 or something like, don't quote me on those numbers, but something crazy like that. And it's not a coincidence that that comes right after the government repurposing all of this money back out to tax paying citizens all over 50 states. That's not a coincidence, right? So I think that they did a good job with actually backing our small businesses and our small business divisions. Um, I don't know, speaking to the agent today, he wasn't able to give me much guidance on the qualification purposes um, on the back end for, hey, you know, um, how are they determining this? And tomorrow I'm going to call customer support and get some more information because we're shooting content this week, so I might do a video on it. Um, and I like to get the information for them from the horse's mouth. I don't want to hear from my other tax account friends, and I love them. But I want to hear from SBA directly. Um, somebody said, those agents don't know nothing. They sure don't. <laughs> a lot of them don't. However, you'll get a really, really good one sometimes. It's about 15 to 25 pages of paperwork. Reading is important, 100%. See the comments. What happened? My comments just disappeared. Um, but yeah, so now if, you know, getting an extra, putting your, but what's the scary part about it, I think for me is that a lot of business owners by the click of a button can get an extra $100,000. I don't know if that's, you know, I don't know if that's, you know, I don't know if it should be that simple. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, you know, um, and then asking for returns on the back end after the applications are submitted. I don't know if I necessarily agree with those tactics, but you know, there must be a reason why they're doing what they're doing. Um, sorry, I just raised the volume back then. Um, but yeah, for those of you that did initially qualify for an EIDL loan, log into your portal. There literally is gonna be a button right there and it says ask for an increase for more funds and you just click it that's how easy it is currently to get an increase on your funds I highly 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 suggest though you do not get an increase on your funds until you know exactly how you want to purpose that cash please do not mismanage what could be your ticket to scaling to level five to level three to wherever you're at in your in your own setting right I know that this EIDML money and a lot of the you know, COVID relief programs, they did revitalize a lot of businesses and corporations all across America, 100% for those that did the right thing. So if you are going to request an increase, I really hope you, um, it's not going to work well for everyone. I have warm people to, check, to keep track of everything, but I see it's going bad. You know it's going bad when there's agents that are calling people directly on my phone. I don't know if you were in the beginning of the live, on the beginning of the live, but I um, said that an SBA agent actually called me today to my cell phone. At first I thought it was a scam. I was like, cause I know IRS doesn't call you. So, um, but it wasn't, they are actually calling to get um, everyone to get signed compliance paperwork and submit their insurance, that hazard insurance you needed to have when you initially signed the, um, the loan closing docs it made it a requirement yeah a year and a half later they're asking for that paperwork now <laughs> so i can only imagine right now when you go to apply for the increase they're gonna initially they're gonna eventually ask for financials but what happens to the businesses that took the income and they're not at a loss for those of you that don't well i don't know if you were in the beginning of the live but don't remember um those of you that may may not remember or may remember whatever when you originally had to qualify for the EIDL, you had to show a 25% loss in one quarter in, in comparison to the previous tax year. At that time, that was calendar year 2020. The previous tax year would have been 2019. So what happened to the businesses that maybe did have a loss in quarter one or quarter two when pandemic was happening in 2020, but may have thrived in quarter three and quarter four? and don't necessarily have that 20 they have the 25 percent loss that was initially needed for that first quarter but they don't have it annually from 2020 to 2021 because they then took these eidl funds reinvested it back into their companies and now may be thriving those are they still have the option to now get their increases 
but compliance wise on the back end when I asked the agent today did he have any um, insight on that he basically let me know to call customer care support <laughs> so and ask them but basically that wasn't his job that all he needed me to do is um, sign a resolution and certification of basically signing my life away for these funds <laughs> so definitely um, I got some more comments hey this is the time to hire an accountant yes if you are a tax accountant mrs lane b um this is now the time is now is definitely the time to definitely make sure you're working with an accountant um especially if you're going to reinvest these funds you want to make sure that you're doing it with caution because you don't want to just remember when you start mismanaging funds within your company it's that's how easy it is to bankrupt your company a lot of you guys start businesses on the side and want to end up being full-time entrepreneurs and business owners you can't be a full-time entrepreneur and business owner where your salary depends on how well your business does and your staff salary that depends on how well your business does you can't just be mismanaging funds and and just say okay I'll buy this this month I'll buy that next month okay I'll do that oh yeah then I hire five more people you can't just freestyle your way into seven figures it doesn't it doesn't happen like that you, you you structure it right and you grow your company and you nurture it and you feed back into it and you make sure you pull in data and you're making sure you're reading things on the back end then you, you nurture it again reinvest into it again and you so on and so forth but it's about 11 o'clock <laughs> so I should probably get out of here um, anyone any thoughts or questions about what I say Straight taxes on here? Oh, that's puts me. I thought I was watching my own video. <laughs> um, but yeah, so spoke to an agent earlier, went inside um, to look uh, at the increase process. For myself, um, haven't been do haven't done it for myself. I, we we personally don't um, necessarily. Uh, need the increase so I don't think we'll be taking it some of our uh, business accounts have already received uh, high number increases it was very simple for them to get it and so it makes it a little leery for business owners out there I really pray you guys do the right thing and um, I really hope that you guys can um, you know just change the perspectives of your business I'm a corporate accountant now. I left the tax industry. It's too crazy with the IRS. I'll definitely some business in your way. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it is crazy with the IRS. And it's only going to get even more crazier. Um, but, you know, for those of us that are keeping up with the curves and, you know, constantly reinvesting into our knowledge, um, the financial industry is going to change. There are a lot of new people in our industry. For some reason, now taxes and accounting is hot. Um, but there's not going to be people that have the long term on that, right? Um, because it's going to be something you have to adapt with. You have to learn to adapt with the changing times. And as much as it sucks, you know, it could either make or break your business. Yeah, they were giving me half of my business gross earnings last year. This year, they doubled the gross. This year, what doubled the gross? Handsome Island. Oh, for what you uh, received, it's a hot commodity until you have to continue investing in knowledge. <laughs> yeah, I mean, everything is an investment, right? I think it's all about the right team you work with, honestly, because, you know, um, when you're building and you're working with the right team, it's, it's fun. It's really fun to build some stuff out. <laughs> um, I didn't make it, though, because I didn't need it. Oh, you didn't take it. I didn't take it, though, because I didn't need it. That's good. It's good um, if you didn't take it. Um, it's it, it's definitely going to be the cheapest money around, right? At that thirty-year term, it will one hundred percent definitely be the cheapest money around. However, um, a lot of a lot of business owners need to know, like you guys have to pay this back, like, and so you can have the hood way of thinking and say, oh well, if everything doesn't work out, I'll just bankrupt my company, and you don't like want to do that <laughs> and you don't want to do that because you want to start restructuring your mindset and your goals around building wealth and that's literally the opposite way you would be going to um, 
to earning you know a potential fruitful future for yourself and your company so I want you to not think about it like that um, and I hope both of you guys don't because I don't think you would be thinking like that and be here listening to me ramble at 11 o'clock at night <laughs> um, but yeah I hope you guys log in if you guys do need the increase or even if you don't but you have expenses that qualify under your original loan agreement and you have a plan for the income go ahead and grab it you know um just make sure that if you are going to start playing with tens of thousands of dollars fifties of thousands of dollars hundreds of thousands of dollars you cannot just freestyle it you can't just wing it piece it all together and think it's gonna blow think you're gonna originally have a high roi no things take time to get ROIs. you have to test products then you have to test pricing then you have to test service then you have to see how much came out of this campaign this advertising this marketing these payroll dollars you have to test these things and so if you're going to be playing with hundreds of thousands of dollars or um, managing hundreds of thousands of dollars you're definitely going to want to make sure you're doing it with someone that is financially savvy enough to at least help you on the back end because it is really easy and people say that just as easy as it's not easy to make your first hundred thousand but it's really easy to spend your first hundred thousand like this it is 100 percent easier to spend a hundred thousand dollars than it is to make a hundred thousand dollars You'd be surprised how fast a hundred thousand dollars actually goes. Yeah, it's a dangerous territory if you lack a game, a true game plan for the money. I'm glad you guys are enjoying this. If you guys are just tuning in, my name is Carmen Mohan. We're talking about E I D L increases, how simple it is business owners how I'm afraid for them and how you know there wasn't just scam and frauding for EIDLs there were actually a lot of business owners that took that and started thriving with the funds if you missed the beginning of the live I also spoke to an SBA agent he gave me some feedback this live is pretty dope but it's 11 p.m. at night so I think I'm gonna clock out now I had a long enough day um, but I hope you guys enjoyed this if you guys like this video or any of my other videos, make sure you go to my YouTube, subscribe, starting with the content, and just tune in, put your notifications on. I'll be talking a lot of stuff, small business, um, and every Friday we are going live for managing your business finances and just kind of really talking through what that looks like on the back end for understanding different key terminologies and principles when managing your business finances and what that looks like. So make sure you tune in. Talk to you later.